What's going on, Packer fans? Welcome into an all new episode of the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Appreciate you being here. Today, we are going to be discussing David Bakhtiari, more specifically, David Bakhtiari's extremely complex injury situation, what it means for the Packers, what options and decisions that they have and that they need to make what Brian Gudikin said about the entire thing in his press conference recently, and what it means for the Packers moving forward. It's a complex discussion. I know there's frustration, and obviously everyone just wants Bakhtiari to be healthy and available and able to play, but that has simply not been the case. But let's dig into it, and I'll try to make this very complex situation as easy as possible. Do you want to know how complex it is? This is my second time recording this episode because I had to clarify a couple things, realized that when I originally recorded it, I had a couple things that I had a little bit off, so I wanted to get this 100% right. A huge shout out to Brad Spielberger from PFF for helping me with a couple of the nuances here, which were really important to get right. So we are going to do this right and get you all the information that you need to know about this entire situation. Let's start with Brian Gudikin's comments from uh, or on David Bakhtiari at his press conference this past week. He said, quote, we're still at the very beginning stages of looking at it. You know how we're going to move forward with all of that. Obviously, David's been through a really rough stretch with the entire injury stuff. He's going through a really major surgery, trying to get back to being able to play. We're monitoring that. I know he's working his tail off. Once we get down the road and see where he's at health-wise, we'll kind of make those decisions. This is a basically, I think Peter Bukowski put it best when he tweeted uh, that basically this was a lot of word salad from Brian Gudekinst. He did not make much commentary on it. It's basically, he's hurt. He's going through a major injury issue. We're going to keep monitoring it and then make a decision once we're at that point. Like that's basically the gist of it here. There was no real major takeaway. It's a slight difference from when he's asked, do you want Aaron Jones back? Absolutely. Are you going to trade Jair Alexander? Absolutely not. Um, You know, and then David Bakhtiari, it's like, it's a bunch of stuff that doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot. What we need to know here is a lot of different things. The status of David Bakhtiari, what his contract says, and what Green Bay, you know, really has the benefit of doing or not doing through the remainder of this offseason to save them money, not save them money, keep them on the roster, not keep them on the roster. So let's go through all of that. Bakhtiari will be 33 in September. He played 27 snaps in 2021 after injuring uh, right before the playoffs in 2020. 27 snaps total in 2021. Remember, he came back for that Lions game, tried to play, made it through 27 snaps, pulled himself out, and then that was it. He came back in 2022, missed a little bit of the beginning of the season, played 597 snaps, then had the appendectomy issue. And that's actually what cost him a big chunk of the end of that season. So 597 snaps in 2022, and then played 55 snaps only in 2023. All of those in week one against the Bears looked great. And then he had the injury flare up and then that was it for that season. 679 total snaps in three seasons, 13 total games. He played one in 2011, one or sorry, 2021, one in 2023, and then all the rest of those 11 games were all in 2022. That's it. The issue here, at least part of the discussion here, is that in those 13 total games, playing probably pretty hurt with a knee that had constant fluid in it and everything else, he looked really freaking good. He was awesome. He like he looked not like prime David Bakhtiari. That David Bakhtiari is probably never coming back. You're probably never seeing all pro Bakhtiari. In those 11 games, he still looked like Pro Bowl David Bakhtiari, or at minimum, great to really good David Bakhtiari, where you can set left tackle, put him there, and never have to worry about it, basically. Like, he is that good. One of my favorite performances all season from this past year was David Bakhtiari in week one. It was one of my highest graded performances. And that's, again, I'm sure him not feeling the best, still going through issues with his knee, probably not having the mobility that he wanted. And he was great. He was absolutely great. So when he is out there and when he is healthy, he is playing at an extremely high level. The issue is in three seasons, he's played 13 total games, couldn't make it through one of those. And in this past season, only played week one and then had another injury setback that took him out the remainder of the season. What is worth noting here, and I've said this on multiple episodes before, but I'm going to say it again here, this is not his fault. It is not his fault. He has not gone through a billion and one surgeries to try to screw the Packers and just take their money. He is doing everything he can to play. Everything. 
And I know so because of what all of the surgeries and procedures and everything he's done just to try to get back. I know so because he played 27 snaps in 2021 when he probably had no right even trying to play those snaps. I know so because, again, he came back this year ready to play, ready to go, wants to compete for a Super Bowl, wants to win, wants to be a part of this team, and then had to shut it down all over again. He is trying everything in his power to play. So I know there's frustration. I know there's a level of anger amongst some Packer fans, which is disappointing, but he is trying to play. He's doing everything in his power. It just hasn't worked, but that is not his fault. It's just a brutal circumstance for everyone involved, for Bakhtiari, for the Packers, for the fans, for everyone. So it sucks, but it is what it is. And again, this is not his fault. And I just posted something about Joe Barry of like how I, I certainly think he's going to land on his feet. And I hope he does great. He's a phenomenal linebackers coach. And Bakhtiari replied to it and said, hey, he's one of the best coaches, um, always positive, And he's just had glowing things to say. And you would not believe the replies to that to him. They were just vitriol and anger and like, oh, how would you know? You're never at practice. And like, just the worst. It sucks. And again, this is not something that you would wish upon him. This was a guy who was the consummate professional every step of the way, rarely missed any time, like ever. I think he missed like a handful of games prior to that injury. This is somebody who was constantly working with other players, trying to make them better. I remember him specifically mentoring guys like Alex Light at practice, trying to make them the best versions of themselves. This is somebody who does not get to the level of technique that he is at, being one of the mo the best technical left tackles, best technical offensive linemen in the history of football by not caring about the game or not caring about his craft. So I'll just say that one more time. He cares about this. He wants to be great. He wants to be playing and he wants to be a member of the Green Bay Packers. Now we get into this really crazy situation with his contract, with his injury. So now we need to dig into what are the options for Green Bay and Bakhtiari. There are five logical, you know, in general options that you have when you're sort of in these situations. Number one is that he could retire. Number two is that you could renegotiate a contract. Number three is that you could trade the player. Number four is that you could release the player. Or five is that you can keep everything status quo and just keep everything with the contract as is and hope that he can come back and you can play on that contract. So those are the five general things that you can do in these situations. Retire, renegotiate, trade, release, or keep everything the same. And in order to decide which of those options makes the most sense, we first need to understand the contract. David Bakhtiari right now has a one-year $40.02 million deal for this season. I'll say that number one more time because it's going to be a little jarring. One year, $40.02 million. We're talking quarterback money for David Bakhtiari. He has $20.2 million of that in base salary. He has $19.08 in prorated signing bonus, $600,000 in roster bonuses, and $700,000 in workout bonuses. So the total cap hit one year, 40.02 million, 19.08 million of that is gone and it will count against the cap no matter what. There is nothing they can do about it. Not a trade, not a restructure, not a retirement, not anything. That 19.08 is sunk cost, it's dead cost, it's already paid for, and it is going to count against the salary cap this year. Nothing they can do about it, period, end of story. The 20.2 million in base salary and the you know roster bonuses and the workout bonuses is potentially savable money and is not currently guaranteed. So that's the possible money that you can go about saving here is that uh, additional again money and, and roster bonuses are not going to be um, you know most of that's unlikely to be earned based on last season. But for the most part, everything besides the nineteen point zero eight is going to be savable here, potentially theoretically. That's what you would normally look at in these situations, but this is not your normal situation. He is injured. We just heard Brian Gutekind say that he is injured. And normally when you release an injured player, there is a, you know, there, there's going to have to be a situation where you have to pay part of that salary. That's part of the process. However, this is where things get a little bit complex. So buckle up and enjoy the freaking ride. There is what is called an injury protection benefit. And I'll just read this to you. If a player gets injured in one season and is physically unable to play the following season and then has his contract terminated before the following season starts, then the player is entitled to 100% of his base salary up to $2.05 million. So 
they can release him, all right? And he is guaranteed a portion of that money, but only up to $2.05 million. So Bakhtiari would lose that $20.2 million in base salary. The Packers would pay him $2.05 million in salary instead. And the Packers would only be on the hook for $1.23 million of that on their salary cap. So if you take the $1.23 million plus the $19.08 million in the prorated signing bonus that I mentioned earlier is not going anywhere, you end up with a total cap hit of $21.13 million and a total savings of $19.705 million. That is a huge benefit to Green Bay because if he is on the roster and uh, there isn't that benefit, you release him and if the, what you do is there's an injury settlement. So if they say that you play, like they think that you'd be able to play in only half the games, you have to pay him for that other half. So you pay half of his base salary then to him in that, that situation. But because there is this injury protection benefit, specifically for these type of circumstances, very beneficial to the team, very detrimental to the player. But uh, David Bakhtiari would only get $2.05 million of that base salary. Green Bay would pay all of that, but only 1.23 of that would actually go against the salary cap. So that would be a potential huge savings. However, if you didn't think that that was complex enough, there's another level of complexity on top of this. David Bakhtiari could file a grievance against Green Bay. Maybe he thought that Green Bay didn't do everything in their power uh, to get him back in the field. Maybe they thought that, uh, or he thought that the, the surgery got botched by the Packers, whatever it might be. There could be a grievance from Bakhtiari. And if he files that grievance, 40% of his base salary counts against the salary cap on the 2024 salary cap until the grievance is settled. That that 40% is 8.08 million. So now you have 2.08 million that would be on the salary cap uh, in addition to the 19.7, or sorry, the uh, $19.08 million in signing bonus that you have. So now you have this exorbitant salary cap situation that you're still paying him a decent amount of money, but but you still have the savings of about $11.65 million in that specific scenario. So it's not ideal. Um, the other thing I need to mention there too is that if even though that $8.08 million is, is set aside and that counts on the salary cap, if they settle... If Bakhtiari and the Packers say, hey, we're going to settle this, we're going to meet in the middle, and we're going to say, we're going to pay you $4 million, Green Bay gets that $4 million credited back to their salary cap. But the entire situation is extremely complex. Just to try to recap that for you in its easiest possible way, Green Bay releases Bakhtiari. Remember, I'll say it one more time, the $19.08 million signing bonus, they can't do anything with no matter what. Not an injury protection, not a retirement, not a cut, not a trade. Nothing saves that for Green Bay. $19.08 million is going towards their salary cap no matter what. All right. The base salary, $20.2 million, they release him with the injury protection benefit. $1.23 million of that goes against the salary cap. Bakhtiari gets $2.05 million of that total. And then... He has the potential to file a grievance or not file a grievance. If they file a grievance, you have the 8.08 million that counts against the cap until they settle it. If he doesn't file a grievance, it's just that 1.23 million and that is it. I know that's complicated. I'm sorry that there's math involved. I'm sorry that we're all not salary cap experts and Russ Ball uh, aficionados, but it's extremely important because Green Bay wants to save as much money of this as they possibly can. And here's why it's important to understand that benefit and to understand how each of these scenarios would work. Now, not all of these scenarios are like logically feasible, but I want to go through all of them so you understand. There are a total of nine different scenarios and I'm going to go through them relatively quick. The first one is that David Bakhtiari retires. If David Bakhtiari retires, the only thing that he gets is that 19.08 million. That's it. He retires, he forfeits his base salary, the roster bonuses, the workout bonuses, all of that goes away. It comes off of Green Bay salary cap. And the only thing that, uh, again, counts against Green Bay's salary cap is the $19.08 million in, in you know, signing bonus that, again, can't go anywhere no matter what. So from a savings standpoint, the best thing that could happen for Green Bay is that Bakhtiari chooses retirement. However, it does not seem like David Bakhtiari wants to choose retirement. It seems like he wants to keep on playing. 
Scenario two is that he is not healthy and they released with that injury protection benefit. And then it just depends if there's a grievance or there's not a grievance. We just went through that, so we're not going to go through it again, but that's scenario number two. Scenario number three is that he's not healthy and the Packers play out the season, hopeful that he comes back at some point, maybe midway through the year. In that scenario, he is going to continue to count 40.02 million against the salary cap for the entire season. And you're basically just crossing your fingers, hoping he can play at some time, not knowing if he's ever actually going to be able to, or even if he does come back week 11, that he's going to be able to go back out there in week 12, or that he's the same player or any of that. You have no guarantees of that whatsoever. So that would be an extremely unlikely scenario. The next one is that he's not healthy. And again, we know that he's not healthy. So these are all the, these unhealthy ones are within the realm of possibility a little bit more. The, the, the fourth scenario is that he's unhealthy and Green Bay and Bakhtiari come to some sort of renegotiation on the contract. If they decide, hey, Bakhtiari, you're going to get 2.05 million in the injury protection benefit. Let's turn that into your base salary. Instead of having this, you know, 20.0 or 20.2 million in base salary and all these other bonuses, let's just turn it into a 2.05 million base salary. That's what you'd get if we release you anyway, assuming there's no grievance. So let's turn that into your base salary. And, and what we're willing to do is we're willing to give you a $1 million roster bonus for every game that you're active this season. All right. Those would be unlikely to be earned incentives because, except for one game because he only played one game a season ago. So they wouldn't count against the salary cap this year. It would go against next year if he played in any of those games. So if he played in 17 games, if he actually was able to, he would get 17 million plus the 2.05 million that he would have as his base salary. So he would you have 19.05 million that he would get this season. And then Green Bay would have, of course, still that salary cap uh, or the roster bonus um I should say signing bonus uh, hit that they have as well, but that would be a very reasonable negotiation. He gets to stay a Packer. If he's healthy, he plays. The 2.05 million Green Bay is going to have to pay anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it's while well, he's on the roster or not on the roster. If he's not on the roster or if he's not healthy, they can keep him on the pup list or um, until he's ready to play. So there's a lot of different you know options there. But setting up some sort of new base salary that is what he would get as a, a roster benefit um, under that injury uh, protection benefit, and then adding incentives off of that for every game that he plays, that could be a way to keep him as a Green Bay Packer, to have him, uh, you know, allow him some opportunity to recoup some of that money and still have the downside be that the, the worst case scenario is what he would have got from the injury protection benefit anyway. So maybe there is an opportunity for them to re, you know, renegotiate the contract in some good faith, keep him on the roster, wouldn't take up a roster spot until he's healthy anyway. And then once he's healthy, he gets a million for every game that he plays. If it's 10 games, he gets 10 million. And when he's healthy, as we've said, he's been great. Even with injury issues, he's been great. You don't mind paying for really good players when they're playing great. So if he can play those games, it's fantastic. It's phenomenal. And again, there's not a huge downside there for Bakhtiari either. So that would be scenario number four. Scenario number five is that he's unhealthy and you're able to trade him. There is 0% chance of this. I get the Jets are operating in a sphere with a GM that's also a quarterback who also happens to be the left tackle's best friend. So I can't rule everything out because that is a bizarre, weird world, but there's no team that's taking on the injury risk with Bakhtiari. Even if he's healthy, which is scenario number six, is that he's healthy and you trade him. You still can't trust with that contract that he's all of a sudden going to be you know, healthy for one week and then healthy another week. There's just no team that's going to be willing to take it on. And even if you would trade it for him, you would be the ones then that have to work out that renegotiation. And Green Bay, if, if, if Bakhtiari did want to go to another team and just said, hey, release me, like I'm, you know, we'll do the injury protection thing and then I'll go and play for another team when I'm healthy. Green Bay just getting everything off their books besides that $1.23 million, that's the return that you get. It's not getting a seventh round pick from the Jets or a conditional pick. It's getting that salary off of your books and not have to worry about the injury anymore. So if he says, I want to go play with Aaron, just release me. We'll do the injury protection benefit. I'll go to New York and get a contract over there. That's the trade. 
it's not actually getting a, uh, any sort of compensation in return. There's just 0% chance that it happens. I said it on Twitter, maybe 0.01 because the Jets are crazy and you just don't know what they're going to do, but I just don't expect it. And even if it did happen, like I said, you're looking at a late seventh round conditional 2020, you know, seven, 2026 draft pick or something like that. It's not going to be anything worth your while anyway. And like I said, there's, it's just not going to happen. So take the trade options away. Scenario seven is that he's healthy and you release him. If he somehow miraculously gets healthy, you release him. The only thing that you pay is that um, the signing bonus that's left, the 19 point, whatever it was, 19.08 million in signing bonus. And it's all you'd have to do. So that's not a terrible option. Option eight is that he's healthy and you renegotiate. Very similar to if he's not healthy and you renegotiate. And then scenario nine is that he's healthy and the contract just stays as is. There is 0% chance that happens. For everything I can tell you with certainty, that is the number one I can tell you with absolute certainty. There is no way that Green Bay keeps him on the roster with the same contract that he's on. Just will not happen. So in my opinion, those are all the options. I'm just going to run through them really quick in, in very basic detail. Retirement, release with the injury protection benefit. He's not healthy and he plays out the season and that you're hopefully can return. He's unhealthy and you renegotiate the deal. Unhealthy and you trade him. Healthy and you trade him. Healthy and you release him. Healthy, re you renegotiate. And healthy and the contract stays as is. Those are the nine general options that you would have in this scenario. There are three, only three likely outcomes in my opinion. Number one, he retires. Number two, he's not healthy and you release him with the injury protection benefit. And then again, it just comes into grievance or no grievance. And number three is that you somehow work out a restructure. Those are the only ones. And if I had to rank them in order of the one that I would expect the most, the most likely is that they release him with the injury protection benefit. And then they might have to work out some sort of injury grievance or settlement. They might not have to, depending on the situation and scenario, but that is very clear and obvious, the most likely outcome of this. In fact, I would put that at about 95% likelihood that they release him and utilize that injury protection. The, ne the next one is that he restructures, um, that where they figure out something where they bring down his base salary a ton and then do like a per game roster bonus for every game that he plays. That could work from a salary cap standpoint. That could work towards Bakhtiari trying to recoup some of the money that he lost. That could still give him the benefit of what he would have got if they released him with the injury protection. There's a lot of potential benefits there for both sides. Do I see it happening? It's possible. It's I would say it's legitimately possible. I don't know if they could get to a number that would make sense for everyone, but I do think there's an avenue to get there. So that would be number two. And then number three would be retire. And that's just up to Bakhtiari. If he just decides he can't play anymore, this isn't worth it to go through more and more surgeries and his knee's just not responding and he just can't play, then he retires. By the way, one other thing really quick. If he does retire, one of the things that the Patriots did with Julian Edelman when he was in this similar situation, Edelman was going to retire and before he retired, they released him. You might say, why would they do that? Is that they released him so that Edelman could get the injury protection benefit, so that he got the additional $2 million. And they took the additional $1 million uh, salary cap hit by doing that. That was a nice thing that they did. I'm not saying Green Bay has to do that, but they could do that if they wanted to and give Bakhtiari that injury settlement on his way out as a thank you for his service if they wanted to. Again, whether they should or shouldn't, I'm sure there'll be plenty of comments in the comment section on, on that, but that is one other option that they could do. If he couldn't play anymore, they could still release him and give him that injury, uh, you know, retirement or that injury settlement benefit uh, first, but that's just a, another quick aside there. So again, three in the order of most likeliness, he retires or sorry, he uh, he's released with the injury protection benefit. He restructures or he retires in that order, most likely to least likely. Every other option really to me is not a realistic option in any way, shape or form. That is it. Um, I, I don't know ultimately when this happens. I don't know when they reach this conclusion. I do know that they probably want the salary cap money before the start of the league year so that they can spend money in free agency if they want. So my guess, if I had to bet on this, before the start of free agency in March, uh, we will see David Bakhtiari released with that injury protection uh, benefit. That would be my guess. That's my official prediction for this. It sucks all the way around. Everyone wants to just see David Bakhtiari be successful in a Packer helmet, carrying the G, being a dominant left tackle like he was born to be, and it just hasn't happened. And that freaking sucks. He'll be a Packer Hall of Famer. 
Um, and, you know, we'll see what happens from here. Maybe he plays next year at some point, maybe for the Jets, maybe for the Packers, maybe for some other team. Maybe he retires, maybe he calls it quits. Those are all going to be things that he just has to go through with this injury. But from a pure roster salary cap standpoint, it's really almost impossible to figure out unless he's willing to give you a really nice restructure. It's impossible to kind of move forward other than releasing him with that injury protection benefit and saving all that money on the salary cap. Even if he does file a grievance, you're still going to get a good chunk of it back more than you would if you kept him on the roster. Um, Again, unless you found some sort of renegotiation. It's a tough process. It's a tough scenario. I know this might be a little bit dry for some going over a bunch of weird, bizarro salary cap situation and numbers and stuff, but it is a very important decision for the Packers. It certainly alters the offensive line and the offense moving forward. It it factors into Bakhtiari's remainder of his career, certainly could factor in for the Jets as well. We will have to wait and see, but one more time, likely injury protection benefit release prior to the start of free agency, maybe a restructure, maybe a retire, nothing else really makes sense. That's going to do it for me today. I will see you guys soon, but until next time, oh, wait, 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 wait. Shout out to Mo Seda, Minnesotan, PJ Wayne, John Wild, Shea Bradad, Brandon Paletta, Jennifer Wright, Boom Handle, Donald Lee, Lori Lord, Baby QB, and David McCluskey are all pro, all pro and Hall of Fame members. Now, I will see you guys soon. Until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.